Hi, I'm Kaylin Lepre with Mammoth Lakes Tourism and today we're with Chris Leonard who is a local educator at the Mammoth High School and also a professional fishing guide at Kittredge Sports and he's going to give us some tips on fishing on our Eastern Sierra Lakes. So thanks for being with us. Thank you for having me, Caitlin. Of course. This segment is brought to you in part by the New National Forest that wants to remind you to leave no trace. So a great way of doing that is just being courteous of the people around you. If you're out on the lake, if you're on the hiking trails, if you're biking, whatever it is you're doing, making sure that you're just conscious of the people around you so you have a good time and they do as well. But we are here at a beautiful lake in the Eastern Sierras and location is really everything. What are some tips that we could get from you about setting ourselves up for success fishing on a lake? Well, you're right about beauty. These lakes here in the Eastern Sierra are just absolutely breathtaking gorgeous. This is what mm -hmm. brings us out here and we love being on the water, fly fishing on them. So as far as location, I'd say that the first advice I'd offer anyone is to take the time to go into a local fishing shop and just ask the staff there. We have a number of them in Mammoth Lakes, they're all great, about mm -hmm. the fishing conditions and ask which lakes are fishing better than others. They're going to point out also some technique, maybe advice, and let you know about what's going on in various lakes. So the first step is trying to figure out where should I go which lake? Mm -hmm. And the next step is fishing on the lake. So as far as being on the lakes, um, I'd say look for the bugs. That's really an important part is fish eat bugs. And so if you have good bug hatch going on and bugs flying around everywhere, it's a good sign that there's going to be fish underneath you when you're out on the boat or the flow tube or if you're casting from the shore. Uh, bug life definitely equates into fish bites. So that's an important part of this process. Right. And so when it comes to tips, once you're on the lake, what can we do better as well as far as our fishing technique goes? I think a big part of it as far as uh, we well, want to find the right spot, you mm -hmm. know, basically read your fish finder and look for structure under the lake. Something that's going to attract fish. Fish like structure. It's a place for them to hide. It's a place for them to capture the bug life that's going on around there and consume and eat. Mm -hmm. So look for that place that's ideal to fish. After that, basically when you're on the water, you want to give your bugs a little bit of life. If you're streamer fishing, you want to give that little streamer a little bit of action. Make it look like a little bait fish that's swimming around. If it's midges, I would suggest when you're out there on the water with your fly rod in hand, give uh, some little jigging going on to your, to your rod. Show that fly underneath, basically giving some sort of movement in life. Right, so if, it looks real. <laughs> if it looks real. And we want to fool the trout with mm -hmm. basically what looks to be like a, a replicated copy of a natural food source. And natural food sources do move, so we want to give some lifelike movement to our flies. Right. Mm -hmm. And so the type of fly, does that matter? Because you always hear about people saying, what's biting right now, you know? And so what what does that mean? What kind of flies can we use? It's a good question. It's a question that we hear a lot in the mm -hmm. fishing world is what fly should I use? And fly does matter. You want a ballpark to be in the correct fly. So Crowley mm -hmm. is really good midge fishing, for example, midges. You're Flies should be clean, all right? They should look new. Basically, anything wrapped with any good wire is good. I tend to believe that if there's a color contrast in there, it's going to key in the fish a little bit more. They might see a white bead head or, you know, a copper bead head over just a standard uh, bead head that's not there. Maybe you have some flash on the tail or a flashback that's on the back. You want to let your fly stick out. These trout see a lot of different bugs, so you definitely want to present something that's going to give some sort of um, aha moment to the trout so that they key in on yours and they're going to come and bite your fly. Exactly. And speaking of aha moment, what was it? You mentioned it's not so much about the fly but more about the rigging. Can you explain that? I think uh, your rigging has to be precise. If your fly selection needs to be ballparked in the correct, trout will eat a variety of different foods. I enjoy Mexican, I enjoy sushi, I enjoy Italian, I love Indian, I think it's the greatest food in the world. Right. Trout are the same way, they eat a little of everything. They're eclectic eaters and they like to uh, nibble off of little bits of every sort of the, the plate at the buffet. So mm -hmm. you do have some trout anglers that will argue that your fly selection has to be precise. I don't agree with that. I think if you present your fly to the trout, as long as they see it, opportunity for them to bite it is pretty good. So what I mean by that is it takes the time when you're rigging your gear to make sure your rigging is precise and correct. Fly anglers ask all the time, what fly do I use? Don't ask that question. Ask, how should I rig my gear? Yeah. So when you're on the lake, you want to have maybe fishing multiple channels. Your bottom fly and your top fly 24 inches apart. Mm -hmm. The appropriate amount of split shot above your point fly in order to get your goods down. Your indicator has to be adjusted accordingly. Right. You have to use your indicator to get it suspended, your flies, off the lake bottom at an appropriate depth. You want to fish the channel that's correct. If you're fishing the right fly, and you're six feet away from the trout, your right fly is not gonna hook fish. Right, it so you're rigging in their face. <laughs> your rigging is important in mm -hmm. your face. So in short, right. I think it's really key in using fresh gear, 
new leader, new tippet. Don't get broken off by that trophy trout. Because if I made the mistake multiple times, I get lazy right. in the morning. I don't re-rig. You want to use new, fresh leader, mm -hmm. fresh tippet. Make sure that you're fishing stuff that's going to land that 20-inch cutthroat that you came out here for. Right. And I liked what you were saying about prepping, like rigging before you're out on the lake. <laughs> so your stuff is all prepped before you go. But thank you so much for educating us and sharing these tips with us. They're really, really simple, but amazing. So I appreciate it. Thanks. You're welcome. Yeah. Thank you, Kaylin. And you guys, make sure you're practicing proper catch and release technique. And if you don't know what that is, go to catchandrelease.org for more information. But thank you guys for tuning in. And this has been your reminder that the mountains are calling.